Welcome to Heart to Hearties. I'm Marg Stark from San Diego, and I'm joined today by three very, very special guests. Back with us today, we have Viv Leacock, Natasha Burnett, and so excited to also have Doran Bell, who played the part of Jacob Canfield in this episode, long awaited. So thank you all for joining us, joining me today. Uh, we're taking up all the screens with the with the Canfields. So yeah. it was it was a very well received episode. My goodness. Um, people really, really loved it. How did you and how did you all feel about it? Okay, it great. <laughs> it was a great episode. It was. It felt really good to have all those elements in there with with Doran and Viv, and then also with the choir, and then pull those all together. I just think it was. It made for a really beautiful episode, and of course, all the other storylines that go with that. You know. Yeah. 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 And Doran, how did it feel to you? I'm gonna let my big brother speak first because I. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know. Um, any any time we get a chance to to you know act out anything that a lot of people can relate to uh you know these are universal themes you know sibling rivalries yes. or 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 you know any type of discord with family and these are the things that like we no matter what no matter who you are no matter what you do if you have family at all, you you dealt with this, you know, <laughs> at some point or or another. Because, At least so, yes. Yeah, you know, the people that are closest to you, the people that love you the most, the people that can be, you know, hurt the most by you. So uh, to be able to address this, especially with the Canfields, because you know, uh, you know, our our unit is 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 pretty tight. You know, on on the show with the storylines, we we're, we we stick together a lot because of you know the circumstances of the times and 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 just the fact that it's Joseph and Minnie with two younger you know the kids are not adults they're not grown up so we have to we we consequently we stay together a lot so to see and for us to experience some sort of discord you know within the family i think uh i think it was it was something that you know fans maybe wouldn't have expected uh for us to to do to portray so it, i think that kind of helped propel the 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 feeling and the sentiment you know about about what was happening and then dorn came on and just knocked it out so you know it was it, it uh it was it was all really easy after he I, like i said i was like i had to follow his lead a lot of the the coverage that we shot we shot his side first and i was like really you just gonna come on the show and just, oh, no, and just, uh, just I'm gonna, I'm gonna, in, I'm gonna interject here. I'm, I <laughs> can't comment on the the fandom because I'm just new here. But as far as what Viv just explained about, you know, my in my personal life, Viv knows my whole family, and. I to, the the experience on this show for me was just very extra special because I love the two of them dearly, like Natasha and Viv, and it's just interesting how everything kind of came about to this opportunity in our personal lives, and on top of that, the actual situation between Joseph and Jacob. Yeah. Without getting into too much detail, I was going through something very similar in our family. So wow. I don't know where from, and Viv knows exactly what I'm talking about. So it was just one of those things where I was like, man, encompassing everything added to how special this this particular guest star or for me was to, to, to yeah. be welcome to the show this way. It was a lot. And I had to just kind of say, okay, this is happening. It's not a coincidence. Just go with it. Go, as my mom, my late mother used to say, go with God and let it happen. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. All right. Before we go with God deeper into <laughs> this conversation, because we're going there, um, I got to say happy birthday to your 18-year-old daughter, Vienna, this week. Mm -hmm. how, how do you have an 18-year-old? <laughs> it's um, not yeah. possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. You do the math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Did yeah. she have a nice yeah. birthday? She had a very nice birthday. Uh, uh, both Natasha and uh, and and Doran were were there. 
Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah, the, you know, Vienna Vienna is this little girl that uh, is not even a little girl anymore. She's She's got it all figured out. She really does. Wow. Like, she, wow. She'll say, I'm going to do this and this and this. And, and my wife and I just go, okay. Like, there's no... Okay, just, adults. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay, adult. You mm -hmm. okay? Do your thing, and uh, yeah, she navigates. She navigates life. I tell her all the time, I'm like you're so far ahead of where I was at the same age. Like Aww. every stage, I'm like you're so far ahead because she's so emotionally like centered, wow. um, and, and she she really listens when in you know when when grown folks are talking she really really listens wow. and applies a lot of the wisdom that we impart on her she really will go out and 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 take us up on that and i mean you know natasha knows doran knows they they they've had conversations with her and it's like ah uh, yeah she blows me away a lot and you know and she is my daughter but i'm blown away by this by this girl a lot well, we're blown away by her too and <laughs> parties want you to wish her a very very happy birthday from us and we have many hardies that still are real you know still don't know that elias and vieta are your kids <laughs> uh, so you can imagine that when doran came into the picture like it, it's a little confused people are a little confused because so, <laughs> So Hardy's yeah, yeah. Jane Woody of Timberlake, North Carolina, and Debbie Kovac of Tampa, Florida wonder, how long have you known each other and what's your relationship outside of when calls the heart? Yeah, D, we talked about this. Uh, was it 98? 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 97. 97. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, 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 and like our relationship is um we're kind of connected um to this one like there's an event that happened to both of us with our mother's passing that really like at that stage of our lives that that like Doran and I like line up on a lot of stuff you know be because you know this this the circumstance in life happened to us around the same time and it just it and it weight it had the same weight attached for us so there's just a, there's just an understanding that we have of each other and our families, our families are interconnected, you know, like his brother and sister are my brother and sister and my brother and sister, are his brother and sister and, and, and so forth. And, you know, his, his niece and nephew, same thing. It's like, it, it's, we're all connected. And, uh, and the coolest thing is, you know, we have that much history and then Natasha comes on board you know, like four years ago, and 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 we knew Natasha separately, which is the cool thing as well. Like it, it wasn't the door knew it's Natasha. So possible. Before. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's it's uh, we we've been really lucky, you know, because we genuinely care about each other. <laughs> it's like it's such a good thing. Like I talk all the time about how when Natasha and I met, it was so easy, it was so cool. We just clicked mm -hmm. right away. I mean, come on, look at her. How, how can no one come on now i know i know <laughs> natasha you should you should tell them the brief story about us speaking about them before you oh that's so funny so we hadn't met that long before i had met viv so it was i i remember it so well it was february 2020 this is right before the world shut down and yep. we were at an audition and i met him outside i met Darren outside of the audition and he was planning on going down to LA. We didn't know the world was about to shut down. And that <laughs> was the whole plan. And then we uh, we were, well, the world shut down. I came back to the UK. I went back to the UK and we were we were chatting over um, uh, Messenger, right? And we were just, and then how did this subject about the show even come up? I think we both, you, Oh, you had had some 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 connection to it because we were talking about Candice, the casting director, and and, auditioning for that show. And it's been going on for obviously for like seven years or whatnot. Yes, <laughs> that's right. And then then he said, "Oh, my friend auditioned for that show." I was like, "Really? Oh, okay." 
and uh, he's playing he's playing Joseph. I'm like, oh, okay, I don't know who he was talking about at the time. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, amazing. And you had gotten a call, Natasha, presumably that you were, that they were considering yeah. you or that you were, oh, wow. Oh my gosh, yeah. too cool. Wow, I love it. Okay. Well, Debbie Chartron of Rochester, New York, really felt as though you guys were brothers. And I'm sure knowing each other as well as you do contributed to that. But Doran, did you study how Viv portrayed Joseph? Because we felt like even your voice and your mannerisms um just made it really appear that you were related i'm gonna i'm gonna answer this hang on you know before you <laughs> say something, before you say so like so, a true brother yes um doran is a mimic like doran can mimic anyone and so <laughs> so he told me he was watching episodes in you know in, pre in preparation for coming on yeah i got but, i got out yeah, I got sucked in. Yeah. I was going to one episode. To. And then I just, I started watching backwards. But anyway. <laughs> he can he can mimic anyone. Seriously. And but, so. Viv is being too kind. But I'll, I'll say. <laughs> um, I didn't really study the brother connection as much as just fell in love with their, the Canfield story. And be like, wow, this is. This is amazing. This is like Little House on the Prairie, but better. Like, <laughs> I love it. Love it. So Mary Germaine Brabant of Las Vegas, where you are right now, says, I love Doran's acting. He made Sunday's show so special. Deborah Godfrey Tutin or Tutton of Fountain in South Carolina wants to talk about the casting. Viv and Natasha, did you recommend Doran? How did all that? How'd all that come to be? Yes. I'll let you tell the story because I, I, I didn't have a hand in it so much. For once, because normally yeah. Natasha helps me out with a lot of my auditions. I almost don't know <laughs> how often I call for her to help me. <laughs> out of, when I got this audition, I was like, I have to, have to have Viv read off. I was yeah. like, it's like a no brainer. Yeah, like, oh, totally. When can you do it? He's like, well, maybe tomorrow. I'm like, okay, what's well, coming when you're ready? <laughs> we, we went to the space together. Yeah. And it was, I kind of felt it when I read for it. I was like, if it doesn't go to me, it's fine. But it's one of those auditions where I was like, the pacing, nah. being in the room. And Viv has a great way of breaking. He just knows characterization and how to break down a, a, any script. And he's, I did it once. He made a few fine fine tuning things, and that and that was it, really. Did you have the sides, or did you have a full? Did you have a real script by that point? Just the um, side, yeah. Just the side. Had, okay. Yeah, I don't think he had those script. Okay. Yeah, but like it. So, so the producers were really cool in that. But I, I gotta say, like our producers have been have been very very cool with us because any decision that that is coming about for the Canfields, they'll discuss with Natasha and myself. Um, mm -hmm. So with this, they've said, look, there are got, these, are, these are people that we like. And they're like, what, what's your input? And I was like, well, <laughs> Doran is like, is like family. I'm like, the kids know him. They've known him since they were born. And, and, you know, he's been in my life for, you know, since like 97, 98. And I was like, it's, it's pretty much no brand. I said, and then he can sing and all these other things, you know, it just lines up. Um, right. And, and, and yeah, it's like, if for me, if, you know, my, my, my brother, Richard is an actor as well. And I was like, if we're not, if we're not going. Arnie's were betting on that. They thought, <laughs> they thought it was going to be Richard initially. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but it, it it's it's uh just the way the way things worked out. It, I, I was like, if 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 Rich can't can't get on, um, you know, uh, then there's nobody else I'd rather have play my brother than Doran. And I I've already played his uncle on something else, so 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 it's all good. He's played. So you've played Vienna's dad on something else. You have played Lennox right, on before. Time to Come Home for Christmas, right? Yes. He played, yes. Okay. Played my other son Lennox's father. Um, oh, I didn't know about that one. Okay. The production, and then I played his uncle. 
<laughs> I played his uncle, and uh, yeah, our age difference. Yeah, just yeah, just switching it around, <laughs> switching around. Yeah. 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 So when the first first pictures started getting leaked of that day or getting released of that day, you know, Hardys were excited because they knew who you were, Doran, from from wedding <laughs> mail expectations, um, which you were in with Lacey Chabert and Kevin McGarry. And also from um, the film you did with Vienna. So, um, but Bonnie Gibney of Westfield, Massachusetts wonders, what is it like, and you spoke to this a little bit, what's it like to come on to a show with such a long history and kind of a storied fan base? I had no idea what to expect other than what Natasha and Viva share with me about how it is on set. So it was so pleasant for me. Oh, good. Um, outside of just doing what you normally do on any project, you focus on what you go to, but it was, it was that whole, that whole set and the way the trailers are set up and everything, it's like a big, it really is like a big family. You know what I mean? It's like walking into someone's house and saying, oh yeah, you know, that's Vienna's room, that's Lennox's room. You know what I mean? Like it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I don't, we never tire of hearing it. We do hear it a lot, but I never, especially from somebody coming in for the first time, it's really nice to hear that it feels that way to you. Here's the thing, and I, I don't kind of remember how many days it took for me to film my little spot, but like when they break for lunch, it was like, oh, we're all going in Natasha's room. I'm like, where's Viv? Is he gone? No, he's having, he's in Natasha's room for lunch. And then <laughs> oh, Viv's wife the next day is like, we're all in Viv's room, like including the kids, like we're all there eating. Yeah, it's really cool. I've Very never cute. happened before. I've oh, I cool. love it. All right, and and did you were you warmly received by the Hardys? Hopefully so. Did you get a lot of little messages and stuff? I hope so. I, I'm so sure cool. that I haven't even scratched the surface of <laughs> what a Hardy good, good. was until like yeah. if you want, like a full like the Hardys hit the breakdown. You, you don't understand what you're in for with the Hardys. <laughs> no, exactly right. Last exactly. week it started to set in, and I'm just like, wow. Okay, let me just respond to this person, and then yes, no effect. I'm like, wow. Okay. Yes, once you have a relationship, you have a relationship for life. Yes. So yes. Yes. special people, the Hardys. Yeah, um, yeah. Start to sink in now. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So before we jump into the brothers' storyline in depth, I want to talk about Voices of the Valley because we saw how very proud Joseph was of Minnie this accomplishment as the choir director. And even though Salt Lake City didn't materialize, this was still a really big moment for many, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, it was huge. I think this really was her her baby for the whole season. Right. And even last season, where it all started from, but being able to be part of um, a competition and even have that opportunity in a new town where previously they would never have even been looked at for something like that or included in something like that so mm -hmm. I think for both of them it meant a lot to be able to be part of it and then for for Minnie to be the head of the choir and conduct the choir and I think it was it was fun for me to play it was fun for uh, me to delve into Minnie's character in a slightly different way and find her fun side and 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 just something that she enjoys doing out of the cafe and a hobby it's, it's such a great hobby for her and um it was it was fun learning how to conduct and and whatnot and just be part of that and then the final the final um see the final song amazing grace and 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 doing that on that day and it was actually really nice to have the audience or so the extras oh, yeah. there and then, and then everybody on stage singing and it just <laughs> it was a really it was a really nice moment for me and Minnie. Yes. Well, there was so much. I mean, between you hovering over Tom with that coffee, I thought you were going to dump it in his <laughs> lap if he didn't let you audition. And then that was hilarious. And then, of course, the warm up of your voices, you oh, know, yeah. brought the house <laughs> down was so funny. Um, and the, yes, and just it's just it was just cool to see um, Minnie step into those moments. And it looked like a very windy day when you had the audience out there. I noticed like mm -hmm. one of the ladies or something. We couldn't, I couldn't believe when I saw it, how good it looked. 
the wind, it was wind rain. The rain yes. was mm. blowing sideways and mm -hmm. it was torrential rain. And every five minutes they were trying to wipe off the seats for the background. Oh my gosh. It was so wet. Oh, and we had no idea it was that bad. It was crazy, okay. yeah. Yeah, but wet and cold. Yes, yeah. it was very wow. wet, wet very and cold. cold. Okay, yeah. all right. And what? Collecting all the rain with the. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 They, boy, have oh, boy. Boy. They, have yeah. A, they had a cover over us, a rain oh, cover yeah. over us that they had to keep getting the water off of. Like, yeah, it was like it's like a picnic. It was crazy. <laughs> okay, and were you singing live? I mean, was that on the spots there wasn't that wasn't yeah it was make an adr or something it, later yeah it was a mix of, of of on the spot you know on the day but it was yeah. so windy and you know right they had to go into the booth and, and clean up a lot of the, a lot of the okay sand. okay yeah. all right okay well returning to mini for a second um you know, a lot of this season, you have been kind of running interference, whether it was between um, Angela and Cooper or between the two brothers. Like, did that yeah. ring true for you in your life? Is it is it a role that you have played before the Peacemaker? Oh, yes. Yes. I have two <laughs> nephews. They're just uh, four and eight and they bicker like yeah. crazy. While at the same time, if one of them is somewhere and you're like, where's Gabriel? Where's Gabriel? It's just like you were just telling him to get off you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So when they're not together, they want to be together. And when they are, right. it's, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's so you were well prepared <laughs> to deal with Joseph, Joseph and Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> So we got to meet um, Tunet Powell, Dr. Tunet Powell on Monday, who serves as the faith advisor um, on the show, in addition to this her, being her TV writing debut, which is, I think, her first screenplay, which was mm -hmm. incredible. I'm just wondering if you all got to talk to her as the storyline was being conceived or at what point you might have had conversations with her or or with Lindsay or anybody in the writer's room about this for a debut yeah. that's, a grand, that's a grand slam for a debut i'd say i don't know well yeah. absolutely no question no question about it it was just beautiful had a very yeah. special flow to it too in addition to you know from a technical standpoint it just flowed really beautifully so great yeah tunet is uh tunet is when you're talking to tunet you know you're speaking to somebody who has looked at everything from every angle possible and uh you know it's all about the details with tunet which lines up with the, again you know natasha and myself we're we're all about those little details those fine little things that you can put into something that that speaks to you know yeah i know there's not a lot of people kicking around that were you know <laughs> of that of the age of the canfields from 1920 but mm -hmm. uh you know, you you we're we're paying respect to to a lot of people that came before us. So, Tunet is 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 instrumental in in us, I, and and I think ensuring that 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 is being you know followed up on. Um, yes, you know, like before it gets to us, someone somebody has to kind of go through and and, and check check some boxes. So yes, uh, we yeah we talk about we talk about how everything's going to go and she'll contact us and and say this is what they're thinking of and this is why and what are your thoughts and it, it's 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 very collaborative so it's cool yeah. i love yeah. that she always makes sure she talks to us sort of before the season during the season both mm -hmm. herself and lindsay were always available even right before a scene you know if you just want to send them a message wow. or talk about something and for minnie's character even uh, for this season, it was a talking point of trying to make sure that Minnie is seen in um, a light that is more social and, and who is she outside of her work life. So she does, she takes it very, very seriously and mm -hmm. uh, really wants to make sure that we are portrayed in, in a number of ways and always in a positive way. Yeah. Great, great. There was so much buildup to this story uh, this season, and Joseph was just so entrenched, and Jacob was 
he came to town, but then he was also <laughs> very standoffish. Yeah. It was like, yeah. why did you come all this way? If you, <laughs> you know, yeah. but it was just really, it seemed, it was almost impossible. It felt like to, to get these two to make some headway with each other. Um, did, did that ring true for you guys that the two people could be that possibly be that stubborn? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, so all, you know, we have, uh, we have West Indian roots and oh. uh, so Dora and I, we have, we have our, our fathers are, are, are very similar beings on this, you know, my dad is passed, but Dorn's dad is still, is still around. And uh, we, we joke about how they are all the time because there's there's such a similarity uh, between how they raised us, stuff that they say, stuff that they thought it's important, just just stuff that they <laughs> that they do. So <laughs> we've seen that level of stuff. Oh, okay. We, yeah, because we've grown we've lived up. it. We've lived it. That is like. Nothing new. It's just Tuesday. <laughs> it's like, oh, you all this and not talk to me? Yeah, that lines up. That, that makes sense. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, yeah. So travel a long way and then not be able to talk to each other because they're so, yeah, they're so yes, interesting. Because in their as Mr. 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 Dorn Bell Sr. would say, it's the principal. <laughs> he'd, say, <laughs> he'd say something. He'd say something. <laughs> He'd say something exactly what he would he, say. Yeah, he would say it's the principle of the thing, and you know? okay, that makes sense. Uh, An apology is necessary. Yes, <laughs> not necessary. Like, oh, oh you guys yeah. are going to be in trouble. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. So when we <laughs> learned that Jacob had not only had had not talked to his brother in twenty years, but that he had not sung or stepped in the church. Uh, in all that time either, it, it really became very clear how much this wound had festered. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah Mosey found Koish of Newfoundland, Canada, said, I felt as though we just scratched the surface with this story. Um, it felt like they must have gone through a lot more together that Jacob felt so abandoned in that moment. And that was my, that's kind of my instinct too. Was there more initially in the script or is it something that someday we may, some it may further unfold what happened to them that this was such a trigger for Jacob? I think um, there, there will be, you know, some more, more discovery, more, more situations where we get to, 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 to see what, what else did transpire? Actually, I'm pushing for I'm pushing for Doran to be on the show all the time. So please, that, yes, the parties would <laughs> like that as well. Good. Aside yeah. from aside from, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping I come back. But aside from that, uh, Sarah's Sarah's question is important because I feel like, you know, personally, I grew up singing in the church, and I've definitely strayed from that and struggled with that back and forth over the years. Mm -hmm. um, because you got to take care of yourself as an artist. You got to make a living. But, you know, I mean, unless you're at like some mega Joel Osteen church and you're part of the fabric, you're not going to really, it's hard to really make a living just singing and doing that only. Mm -hmm. um, yes. to take further, people lose faith when things happen. And again, the details of Jacob and Joseph's relationship with whatever they went through with their father and all that kind of stuff. Yes. For... For good reason, obviously. I mean, look at look at his wife. But, but I'm saying for him to leave and just leave me, <laughs> be why he would be like, I've been praying this whole time, and this is what you're gonna do. And people, it happens all the time. People walk yeah. away. And say, if there really was a God, then this wouldn't have, he wouldn't have left me with that granddad or yeah. whatever. Yep. You know? Yeah. Um. So yep. that's that's a really good question. Yeah. For me, I had a lot to draw from doing that personally to bring that alive up until that one. You know that that I want to always bring back to that one scene. It's one of my favorite. I've had a lot of favorite scenes in this, but yeah, scene of and I in the morning time. It was early morning. Yeah, the library. But we were sitting in the green room, and we had like one question. We had like one conversation about our moms, and it, I was able to draw on that for the struggle between Joseph and myself yep. and my characters. 
yep. you know so yeah and like just, i and like i said i had to, i was like i gotta follow this man this dude. like we had this conversation and then we went and shot it and we were shooting we're shooting on you know i'm off camera they're sh we're shooting on to doran first and man he killed it and I, was that, that stacy harding's episode yeah stacy harding, harding was the director okay yeah. i wonder if she did that intentionally did his coverage first i don't it's interesting that you say that it usually is happens in the reverse i don't know there's got to yeah. be a reason I, I, yeah, I think that was, uh, you know, you kind of, it, it kind of, that'll happen a lot of times. The, the, the okay, person, who's coming, okay. in, All right. person okay. who's coming in, we do their coverage first. You yeah. Know, because, you know, like Natasha and I were dropped into this whole situation, you know, the set and everybody on it. So it's, it's easier for us to do, do whatever. Find your way. Do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have your, oh, yeah, you have a yeah. little more. So um, we usually do that, but man, whew. Well, it was quite a scene. He, he no, got, it, <laughs> one. Yeah, I, it was, I felt like both of you were teary <laughs> at one point, or yeah. you know, close to welling up, and um, it was very, very impactful. But I did feel as though, for all the reasons that you described, Warren, I think you know it's a complex issue, and there probably are a lot of other factors involved, and we would love to know more. So. Um, on top of that, you looked very dashing, says <laughs> Jay Van Vuren of Manchester, Michigan, in your period attire as the haberdasher. Um, mm -hmm. Did you enjoy the costuming? Did you enjoy that whole aspect? Mm -hmm. I mean, when I went into the wardrobe fitting, uh, I don't really get to do a lot of period piece stuff. So it was, yeah. really cool. you know, I was like, Fun. Wow, and, and, and shout out to Barbara, uh, Barbara's. Our, our costumer she's amazing 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 amazing, amazing. yes mm -hmm. so heather hood of minneapolis suggests that hope valley doesn't have a haberdasher and you know <laughs> we have a lot of well-dressed men but they could always step it up so mm -hmm. Harvest would like that we'd like to see you back and have another have an have yeah. a haberdasher yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so pam Wallace Heyer of Akron, Ohio, says the whole story of finding forgiveness really hit home for her as she's been in a position herself of not knowing, you know, what she had done wrong or what the issue was. The line about God's timing was very special to her, too. What were your thoughts about those aspects? Could you all relate to this jo to this dilemma of Joseph's that kind of the principle of the thing like i can't apologize unless i know what i'm apologizing for yeah like yeah you know there's so many times where what you think has happened in your head and it's not that at all and why people don't communicate better in any case to just find out what it is and somehow we just get so stuck in our own feelings so stuck in uh, in what we believe and our own principles that we never go yeah. to find out what it is. And then this is how so many years can pass. And, and you realize at the end of it all, was it actually worth not speaking for that long for ultimately? No, nope, nope. And, and in families, we, we use a shorthand. We, we aren't necessarily always good about really connecting and really saying what's underneath all the feelings and- um, Yeah. And it's interesting because, like I said, they've told me one time I was going through a one of the many family issues. I always approach Viv just as my boy and say, hey, man, what do you think about this? And sometimes it doesn't matter how much you pray or how much good energy you throw at something or what. It is God's timing because we want yeah. things to happen now. And sometimes it's just like it's going to have to happen when the when God or the universe or someone said, or you know what I mean? It's supposed to happen when it's supposed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. For whatever reason, yeah. that's ne never usually when we want it to happen. <laughs> so <Nope. laughs> that's not how it works. But it's, it's um, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these, you know, miscommunications, uh, they're they're almost set in stone because of, again, you know, you get a family dynamic. So Joseph being the older brother, and Jacob being the younger brother, there's just you know, depending on how many years they are apart from each other, you're gonna get. You know, like, so my, so my brother, Rich, Rich is six years older than me. 
And that's, you know, that's, those are dog years. There's, I always was, I always had to listen to my big brother because he was so much older than me as far as, like, sorry, I'm stressing so much older. Uh, <laughs> but like, but, Again, you but, guys are in deep trouble after we're in this. Trouble, we're in trouble. But like, you know, if the if the younger sibling can see the physical difference between the next, you know, the older sibling, it helps when they are saying, "Hey, I need you to do this, this, and this, and this." But if you're, you know, like like my kids are all they're two, you know, Vienna's four years older than Elias, and Lennox is like two and a half years older than Elias. So yeah. the two boys are like. Like Elias is like, you're barely, you're barely older than me. <laughs> and you try to tell me something, but it's like my brother. Man. It's like his brother yeah, Dex. Sure. Same thing. But Dex ain't listening to anybody. So, you know, <laughs> it's and, but it's 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 you know, Natasha and her sister, like it's it's just that dynamic is just set in stone from when you're small. And it takes conversations to iron that stuff out like I, this is a true story my brother and i we had to have it was a five hour conversation that we had years and years ago now where i was like you i was like you you don't see me where i am in mm. this present time you see me much younger and you're talking to me like i'm much younger and you need to you need to move the needle and it took it was a five hour conversation. And by the end of it, maybe he was just fatigued, <laughs> but he was like, I You guess. wore him down. I wore him down. I wore him down. I wore him. See, you see, he's so old. No. <laughs> 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 so, so, no, but it, but it, 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 that moment in our relationship, we were already super close, but that, oh man, that changed everything. And we've gone forward you know, in, in a much better way. And, and my, my younger, our younger sister, she, she, well, she's been coming at us her whole life anyway. So we, we don't, we don't mess with her very much. She will put us on our backs. Like she's tough. So, so, uh, it, but it, everybody had, you gotta say what you need. You have to, like Natasha said it earlier, you have to communicate how you're feeling so that people know, because people can't read your mind. They can't. And you have to tell them, this upset me. This bothered me. And, and yeah, no, that's, like, a oh, great point. Point. that's a yeah, great point. That's a great point. The onus has been put on on Joseph to forgive without knowing, but you know, they're also Jacob also needed to tell tell him what was wrong so that they yeah. could reach a point. <laughs> but uh, but also God's timing was involved because timing. somehow somehow the Holy Spirit moved and Jacob stuck around long enough. Whether it was really because he wanted to see his niece and nephew perform or whether it was really because he just held out some little hope that 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 could come together before we move into amazing grace we have to talk about another good friend of yours um that incredible orchard scene with martin that you had mm. viv it's such a gorgeous scene um in the porch swing you know yeah. And the fact that Henry was the answer to your prayer, <laughs> um, I was on with the New England Hardys last night and they were struck by that scene. Just like, who does the pastor go to? You know, like yeah. obviously he has a spouse and, the, and that burden falls to the spouse very often. But who does, who does the pastor or the rabbi or whatever faith leader, you know, turn to in such a small community and he turned to Henry. Tell us about that scene. Yeah, you know, uh, like Doran said earlier, there's there's a lot of kind of life or art imitating life moments uh, on our on our show. But for, for whatever reason, I don't really know why. But in my life, I have I have been a person that people will come to and say. I have this situation that's happening. You know, what do you think? And a lot of times, I don't know why, I can just see things very clearly. Like, oh, I, this person probably feels this, or this person probably feels that. Like, that's why they would have said this to you. And I'll play devil's advocate a lot. Like, I, you know, I love the people I'm talking to, but I'm like, oh, well, you kind of said this, which is probably why they said that kind of thing. But in turn, when you're that person, 
you can actually feel alone a lot of the time if you don't take because I kind of solve a lot of my problems myself like again that same ability to kind of look at other people's problems and, and figure it out what well, has to I am I'm not only giving advice I am taking advice when I'm speaking I have to like I have to if I'm really say hey you should probably think about doing this then it's it's reinforcing it for myself as well so I, it, I, it's cathartic to help folks with stuff because you actually you end up hearing it yourself and and so in turn sometimes when you maybe haven't broach that subject with someone else and it's your own problem you kind of feel like well I don't, there's nowhere to go and uh it, it 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 so for the answer to show up in someone like henry who who joseph has kind of helped you right know, move, move along it it's it's very it's kind of ironic uh that it that he's the answer he it's like huh you know, I, I actually love that scene so much because of we're, we're leaning into that understanding of their relationship by the way I'm like, <laughs> huh, I didn't know it was you that was going to come and say what I needed to hear, but I knew someone was going to say something. And yeah, it's usually it's many, but maybe in this instance, he knew it was going to come from somewhere else and, and, uh, but he just didn't know who, and that it's Henry, I think, is uh, a kind of poetic justice there to that. Yeah, it was just gorgeous. I think it'll go down. I mean, I think both of those scenes, all of those scenes will will really be among our favorites. So yeah. um, Carol Whitaker of Diamond Bar, California, said the reconnection of, of the brothers when you both sang Amazing Grace had her crying, had many of us crying. She <laughs> said the song always gets to her but your acting seems so real as if you were the only two people there. Talk to us. You've talked to us a little bit about shooting that scene, but in terms of the interpersonal, what was it like? And the harmony, you guys got into some, a little harmony too. <laughs> well, we worked on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, you know, the harmony and singing and everything. Uh, again, both Natasha and Dorn are singers. And so I was like, please tell me what to do. And uh, <laughs> they, they, they helped out a lot in that respect. But Doran said it earlier, you know, our, our discussion about our moms um, and, and, and going through that, that was really kind of the basis for how we were moving in that space. You know, we just, we just, we line up on that and it's, there's a, you know, there's a similar, there's a loss that they both have have shared with the, the you know the grandfather, and 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 in, and in our lives it's our mothers. Like we understand each other so much when it comes to that. So, we, yeah, we we just were able to just drop in, just because of our relationship. It's really it was, because it was of cool. It was actually cool for me as well, in in that sense that it was the first scene I had where I could see an array of all the other characters that I've been watching for. Yeah. Three like, oh, wow, wow, <laughs> you know what I mean? I took that all in and kind of fed into the nervousness of me approaching a situation where I was literally just planning to come watch my niece play a few keys and then hit the train. Yeah, put on the spot, man, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You had to make a choice. So it's made, Joseph, why don't you join us? <laughs> He's like, no, yeah, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> Join us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was kind of Manny's altar call right there. It was mm -hmm. like, okay, it's time. It's time. You got to make a choice. So, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it was really beautiful um, amidst the rain and the wind and everything else. <laughs> it was incredible. Uh, we do realize that this needed to be the brother's moment. But that night, Natasha put on her Instagram, I think, uh, oh recording of her singing with Doran at your birthday party and my gosh uh so much talent we need to hear you sing Natasha when is it when is, is that season 12 can we count on that in season 12 
That would be nice. It would be <laughs> nice to actually see something. Yeah. I, I think it's time. Yeah. It is time. I, it's yeah. time. It's Sing that. Time. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think it's time. Okay. And next year, Cooper in the choir too. Yeah, that was okay. that was funny. So obviously Cooper needed to be up there to be with the family, but he hadn't been in the choir scene. Was there any particular reason for that? No, I uh, don't think so. Yeah. I think it was just okay. a point that was just overlooked, I think. It just didn't okay. really all right. So <laughs> he's gonna be in the choir now. We if except for during baseball season. So we'll except yeah, that and and, and and his his voice is changing like Elias's voice is. <laughs> <they'll tell laughs> oh my Elias's gosh! Voice is, is dropping. He's 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 five foot eight now. Is is and his voice is uh, dropped and it's a trip. He is <laughs> he's yeah he's getting more and more handsome. He's super. Elias is super cute, but he's he's he has to, always been handsome. <laughs> my goodness! Oh, you, you see him now. You're like what? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty crazy. Well, it was a very cool storyline for them too. I just loved it. Um, yeah. So, um, Viv, we were really touched to see that episode six this season was dedicated to your dad, uh, Rowena or Rowena Sizemore of Mineral Wells, West Virginia's Virginia. Wonders if you could share more with us about that, about the dedication and how that, and about your dad. Yeah, you know. Um... The, the the team at, at when calls when when they found out that my dad passed they you know got a hold of me and and um just just to express their condolences and you know if you need anything you know if you need time anything and, and uh and then they said we you know we would love to dedicate you know put a dedication to him in one of, in one of the the episodes and just the timing uh, of of where we at, were at at that moment they were like okay we can we, we we've already kind of locked these episodes but we can slot it in to, to the next one so it really had to do with the timing of how things when things are filmed and then when things are going to come out sure and they ended up doing that um but it, it 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 yeah it meant it meant a lot it was um i i, I told my dad my, my whole life I said I'll, I'll put your name up in lights one day and because you know I was talking about our last names but um to to be able to um to be able to do that for him was uh was really special and we're, we're coming up on the uh, a year since he passed on on June 1st so it's um yeah I, I was uh, myself and my my whole family were blown away by that dedication and uh it's the the team is is they they really they really do make you feel like family you know and they bring you in and they and they there there's always you know christmas cards and birthday greetings and gifts and that the, honestly they they really do take good care of us and uh, well you take good care of them too i saw the cookies you had made for everybody <laughs> last year and you're always the first person to you're so generous we've noticed with your affection and praise for others in the cast and um so uh, but i hope uh, can, i hope you. we can just put your dad's name in lights forevermore so that's really thank beautiful um, um what more might we expect from the Canfields? We got a. We have a. Let's see. We're going into to episode nine. So mm -hmm. nine, ten, twelve. We got four episodes left. Can you tease for us what might be coming? I think we did see s some interaction with you and maybe Faith about Lily. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. I think we yep. saw some photos. So yeah. Anything no, else no. you want to share with us? Well, yeah, I'll share with us, but but I'll ask you to share with us. <laughs> Natasha, Natasha's better at that than I am. Go ahead, Natasha. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, the remainder of the season for us, it's uh, you know, really the the episode just gone really was the Canfield yes. episode. But right. we always have our moments where we step in on other stories, and as we come to the latter part of the season, you know. There's a lot of other um, celebrations <laughs> and mm -hmm. situations in town that the Camfields are part of or 
Minnie is part of some and Joseph is part of others. <laughs> For the um, wedding, presumably, we're going to have to have a pastor. We're going to have to have some food for a really, wedding. You know, these things, these you things know. require those services. That's your client, right. gentlemen. Well, come on, the yeah. haberdasher can <laughs> get involved. Let's do you it. Know. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I love it. Okay. <laughs> all right. We're looking forward to it. Thank you all so much. And Doran, it was such a pleasure to meet you for the first time. Um, we, we were really blessed by this storyline and um, we hope we get to see a lot more of you. Let's just put it that way. Where can Hardy's find you on social media? These two, I think they've kind of gotten plugged in, but tell us where where we can find I, you. I'm, honestly, I'm not I'm much of a, I'm not a big social. I, I'm just, just Instagram, really. Okay, I, Instagram. Uh, okay, perfect. Okay, I Doran. Know. All right, so it's easy enough. All right, perfect. And Viv and Natasha, this is the second time you've made time for us this season. And we're so very grateful to have you. Um, you always, you know, just take us so deep on on Heart to Hearty. So thank you. And congratulations on season 12. We're absolutely delighted and can't wait to see what more mm -hmm. lies in store. So um you know, you guys are headed into that in, in July, presumably. So it's just around the corner to start filming. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And well, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you can see the number of questions that Hardy's had. So they, um, they thank really. Can thank all of you. Yeah. 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 So, Honestly, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> we wouldn't be here without the Hardy's like, like everyone yeah. in the cast knows that they know that that there's a very special group of folks that care so much that you know help us drive this forward uh it, I, it's unlike any other group that i've seen i, I haven't well, seen this before it's unlike any other show so it all is a it's a big circle and it i think is. I think there is a lot of amazing grace at the heart of the show. So um, we're really very, very lucky. So thanks for tuning in, Hardys. Um, we will be here again on Sunday night, nine o'clock, eight o'clock central. We need you to tweet with us with the hashtag Hardys and follow us on YouTube so that you don't miss a single chat. We got a lot of other um, of our cast and our crew um, and our writers every week still coming. So um, we look forward to seeing you on Heart to Hearties. Bye-bye.